Hello to the chicos and the chicas, back at you with longer games inside my head. Let's see how it is going to play out without me kicking. Wow, I managed to kick. Actually, I don't need the headset at all. Yeah, let's take it off. So, let's see how we go um, with explaining thought process, thought process, bishop b4. It's basically a transition into a uh, reverse Rosolimo Sicilian. And I'm a tempo down compared to the reverse Rosolimo. But the idea is that actually that can come very handy when um, I want to play f5 quick. But queen c2 usually transitions into a um, different kind of Sicilian where I'm going to take and the knight f6 d5. And again, we are going to be playing a reversed Sicilian. Knight d5 is a move that avoids it here and is potentially best. Um, against most other moves, I think I'm going to take and then play d5. So we will see how this develops. But for the lower rated uh, viewers, I would like to highlight that uh, you can see that development is very, very heavily on my agenda. So much so that here after d5, if he takes, which I guarantee you he will do, I'm going to more than likely take back with the queen, which many of you probably will go like, why would you do that when knight d5 comes with the tempo? There are multiple reasons for this. One of them is, is that although it does come with the tempo, but the queen is also misplaced on c3, so he was more than happy to go back. Secondly, queen d5 brings a new piece into the game, and my queen can't really be hurt on d5 in terms of a developing move, because if he plays bishop c4, I've got g2 hanging, and knight f3 is running into e4, which is quite unpleasant. And so now I'm one more step closer to finish my development with one of these bishop moves and castle queenside, which is a weapon that I talk about in my courses, in fact, in almost all of them, that when you are ahead in development, almost certainly you should aim to castle queenside because that way you are actually going to bring a rook into the game immediately and likely you will be able to inflict even more damage uh, onto your opponent. Oh, oh. All right, that board was a bit miscut. I hope that I didn't mess it up too badly. So now we are anticipating perhaps d3 so that then he can go knight f3. He plays knight f3. So now what I need to calculate is e4, bishop c4. And then I reckon I would go queen h5, knight d4, hmm, knight e5. That still looks great. That still <clears throat> does look great. Do I have a reasonable alternative to e4? I mean, I could go bishop g4 right away, but again, bishop c4 is a bit uh, a bit annoying. I would have to drop back here. Let's go, let's go. In fact, I just noticed that I can come back here as well. And then if knight d4, knight d4, queen d4, queen d4, e d4, then he has this very ugly double isolated pawns. Our opponent is Dihon. A very quick look at who Dihon is. A Brazilian dude. Right. Ooh, wrong board. Soz. So yeah, now Bishop C4, I have a dilemma whether to pull back here or to go here. I'm not sure. And uh, no other move appears to be reasonable at all. So we are anticipating Bishop C4 most definitely. So one more time, if queen h5, knight d4, knight e5. Oh boy, I like that position a lot too. Whereas queen d6, maybe he has knight, g oh, then I have knight e5 again. Yeah, queen d6, knight g5 hits here, but then knight e5 hits this, defends this. And you can see that developing this bishop is going to be a major, major issue. Um, for white in this game. Oh boy. How should we do this? Yeah, something tells me to pull back, but I'm not sure if this is the right decision. Um, it's possible that uh, Queen H5 was uh, more in the spirit of uh, retaining the aggression and the initiative. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. But I'm happy after 90 G5, 95 with defending and hitting this. And after 94, 94, queen d4, pawn d4, bishop f5 to deny d3. Um, just looks like a million dollars, man. So, yeah. This, this went really, really, really well for us in terms of opening. And what I think our opponent did wrong here, a3 is very, very provocative. So I'm already planning on taking myself without being provoked. So maybe knight e2 is a move here to retake with the knight. And knight e5 most definitely is, uh, is the most topical move here. And that sort of puts the spanner in the works a little bit for me. Now he's in, in deep trouble. So knight g5, knight e5, there's no need to think there because that's a very obvious move. Um, although I do tell my students all the time that when they calculate a move that is still to be, a, uh, to be played on the board, then always recheck your calculations when it is actually on the board because very often students tend to overlook things. Now, without wanting to sound obnoxious, obviously this has less and less effect as you become a stronger and stronger player because your calculation will be actually very accurate. But now this has popped up in the last month at least five times that my students would calculate the line starting here. And then based on what they calculated here, they would play a move instantly out five moves later instead of checking and then playing it out. And they all got burned severely because that calculation was inaccurate. And when they played the move immediately, instantly there was a very, very uh, powerful uh, counterattack or there was a blunder somewhere along the lines. But the long story short, it's very important to recheck your calculations the way how I did not. But then again, in this particular position for me, I felt 125% confident that this was the best move on the board. And so I did it. Now, as far as anticipation is concerned, I don't know, man. Like, if the bishop drops back, I have h3, the bishop goes back, uh, sorry, the knight goes back, I take it, they take, I castle. It's unplayable. It's terrible. Um, the bishop can go back that way because of the check there. f4 was a move I looked at, but then I thought, again, I would take the bishop, queen takes, and then I would not blunder this, which I originally did when I calculated this line. So here is the... I, I thought that I would take take and h6 and kick the knight out and then bishop e6. But now I'm seeing that after f4, take, take, there is a threat here. So I need to play castles and then h6 and then bishop e6. Which makes me wonder if perhaps after f4, it's better to just take it. Um, Hello, h6. If bishop b2, then I can take this. So after h6, he has to go back. I will take that. He takes back. And then I have got a lot of moves there. I have check, but I also have castles, which is what I'm going to play. This is over. Um, unfortunately for him, he got caught with his king in the middle. Many again would doubt if this is a good choice, but I can guarantee you it is one because it immediately allows me to castle and this check is now part of the business. Now I wanted to play he castles because then after bishop here I have check and pick off this. But now upon deeper observation I realize that if I castle he can drop back. Although then I have neither free check again. Because if take, take, bishop here, then I have knight e4. Oh, queen d4. Maybe knight d2 then. Maybe I was a little bit cocky. Maybe this was premature. I don't know. I'm a bit second guessing myself now. Nah, okay, let's, let's just go natural chess. Castles can be bad. Bad, rather. So now the alternative plan, which I really like, upon closer reflection again, is that after here we have check. 
takes takes and this bishop oh bishop here though yeah but the knight e4 hits this this okay so th the idea that i'm trying to to do on the board was that after bishop e2 check bishop takes pawn takes i want to go queen here queen here and mate so let's calculate bishop here check by the way when you play your games don't ever do draw these arrows because they will mess up your thinking what it's just a blunder okay now it's game over bishop e2 was his only move um I mean, maybe king f1, knight d2, king g2 is what he wants, but, um, oh, wow. Hello? Check. Now king f1 is only. Wow, this is terrible chess by my opponent. And resignation. Okay, we'll, we will revisit this in the analysis, and I'm sorry for calling it terrible, but it is terrible. Like, here he still had queen and king here when the game wouldn't have been over whereas um, now it well and truly is okay let's kick this oh no let's just go here here right okay that would have been foolish i can't i'm thinking it's almost unstoppable mate now okay not quite We'll kick the bishop out and we'll try to sell this one too. Okay, the rest is really n not going to be particularly instructive because uh, my opponent is a piece down. By the way, 95, 93 is probably an even better plan than what I'm trying to do. So just to be sure that we understand, oh my God. Um, yeah, this turned out to be real bad. Okay, let's try one more game and then I will do the analysis after. The idea was to play against lower rated opponents, but um, following the leeches policy of only one account allowed, uh, I'm playing on my own account and I cannot play some 2500 rated uh, rapid. So even 500 is the largest rating gap that you can go down by. And therefore, ooh, I forgot to display my opponents. Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. You didn't see the clocks at all during the game. So, so even this guy is 2100. But... Um, I don't know, sometimes it's easier to dis uh, to explain instructional ideas against someone who is a little bit uh, more of a seasoned player. Okay, tick, 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 knight f6, we will take, and then bishop d3, and then we'll try to castle queenside just like before. So take, knight of, uh, bishop d3. There's not much point in this position playing bishop g5 because bishop e7 and you have to trade anyway. Okay, bishop e7, queen e2, castles, bishop d2. Not really a good line, this is that I'm playing, but at least it's one that uh, keeps a little bit of uh, energy and uh, life in the position. Um, c5 will take that. We'll take back and then we'll castle. So at least I have got now what I wanted to have in terms of, um, you know, this is objectively not a line that uh, gives white any advantage, but at least I have got some kind of an initiative based on the fact that my development is complete, his isn't. And because of the kings are castled to the opposite side, again, um, it always generates a little bit of an extra oomph. Like I can get cute with a quick g4, g5 idea at times, which is very handy. Keras did that against Petrov, a game that I believe I put it up on uh, this very channel. And queen b6 is a popular move here. I have had some struggles against this. So um, now if I go knight e5, which is the most natural move as far as I'm concerned, then bishop f2, rook f1, bishop d4, knight c4, Four is hitting queen defense mate. I actually like that. I don't think it's objectively a good move, but I want to experiment with this a little bit because I'm happy for him to take this because that opens up a tactical avenue that I really, really like. And that is the following. Takes rook here. And for argument's sake, let's say the bishop goes back. And then I take the knight 
bank. And then I have after GF either further sacrifice and then check with a raging attack that I dare say is an instant win or take here bishop back rook take take and then queen h5 immediate mate threat forcing f5 and again check check bishop h6 and mate on g7 is inevitable. So this is why I always preach a lot about not really paying too much attention to material in the sense that your first thought when something like this occurs should never be the how do I defend this, but the how do I outsmart this kind of mentality. Um, now I've got another favorite motif of mine, of mine kind of emerging, which is g5 something, sorry, g4 something, g5 knight, he check. King takes and then I have check takes. So let's go for that now. I don't see why this is a relevant move, by the way. Unless I'm missing something, I don't understand rook d8 at all. This could turn out to be a very hugely instructive session because the previous game was, okay, the end of it was really lame, but um, the way how we got there was quite cool. And here I think we also might be looking at uh, something rather juicy and delicious. And now after bishop takes f2, I don't even want to do this anymore. I just go g5 and uh, carnage, carnage, carnage. Hopefully I did say carnage enough times. Okay, he's totally oblivious to my plan. So now knight d5 check, king takes check, king back check, king here. What's the fastest mate there? Now, I, I nearly played it out and went like, yeah, I will figure it out then. But I actually want to impress. I would like to impress. So I will try to figure this out. Although I'm 100% certain that it wins. So check, takes, check, here, check, back to h7. I could go queen h5. Oh, no, because if g6, then knight f6. Okay. Okay, maybe I have bishop c3, knight takes c3. This is really far-fetched. Nah, I don't want to do that. Okay, so take, take, check, he, check, back to h7. Queen g6, king back, that's no progress. I mean, okay, I have got knight d7 in the end. And that just is going to mop up. Okay, let's go. Like, I just found a line that is guaranteed win. And so then you have no reason to not to. So now I'm not going to play knight d7, by the way. No way. I will think. Because I still am not happy with that. I really want this to be a mate attack. But uh, I just don't have a very easy access to rook lift. That's the problem. G6 is an interesting move here by the idea of bishop h6, but I don't think it works. I have check here, which also doesn't seem to carry the necessary imp. Oh my god, and then he resigns. Like, Jesus, man. Okay, so... Um, Let's go back to analysis board now and have a look at um, have a look at the games. Um, yep, yep, yep. Analysis board. Okay, let's go back all the way. So c4, e5, blah 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 blah, yada yada yada, and a3 is not really a good move here. A3 is not really a good move here. Even the engine approves um, the idea of take take. Although here the machine wants to play castles, which I really dislike. I'm very happy with d5 takes, queen takes. And here the careless engine wants to play b4, but I don't believe in that for a second. Not a millisecond am I going to believe that b4 is a good move here. 
I'm going to put on the engine for you so that you guys can see it too. So b4, I would have played one of these bishop moves. And if bishop b2, then I would have castled. And if knight here, I would have played rook here. And now the engine eval is still slightly white's favor. I'm very reluctant to believe this, but the engine is smarter than me. Anyway, knight f3 was played, e4 was played, bishop c4 was played. And I was a lot more optimistic than I should have been, apparently. But anyway, I went back to d6, the correct move, knight here, knight here, b4, double question, h6 back, take, take, and check was the better move here, apparently, so I made a slight mistake here. Ah, uh, marginal error. Uh, bishop b2, bad, so I was worried about bishop d, well, not worried, but I reckon that this was ba uh, ba best, and I wanted to go this way. But this turns out to be not as good as uh, knight f3. And then coming from e4. Yeah, this is just an overwhelming uh, position for black. The white king essentially doesn't exist. This is a no-go zone for sure. Opponent played bishop b2. Oh my god. I just missed the piece. I mean, to be fair to me, and I don't want to sound lame, but I'm recording this after four and a half hour stream at midnight. But missing this is inexcusable. Well, well. I'm gonna upload it anyway. It's just to show that I am also a mere mortal takes. And I was telling him to go here. Yeah, okay, so this queen d7 is best. That's not an easy move to find. And the idea is that if king here, then we have check, king here, and then we have got a lovely mate. Oh my god. Take a guess if I saw this or not. Alrighty, um, so he took and then, yeah, it just fell apart afterwards, everything came off. Let's have a look at the other game because that was a little bit better contested. Um, so this one was... Um, dum, 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 dum. Oh wow, 7 average centipon loss. I guess there is a reason to be proud there. Okay, da 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 Turns out that this opening was quite well played by me. Take, take, take. And queen b6 is actually a mistake and 95 best. Baby! Look at me go. Knight d, rook d8. Oh, okay. Bishop g5 is the favorite move. The idea is identical, actually. Take, take, take. That's the plan. And I'm surprised that after bishop e7 it doesn't work. Can I just take... Take and take, what's wrong here? Huh, it's only a draw. Too many pieces came off. Very curious. Okay, fair enough. So I actually prefer my move g4. Against which the best defense is bishop d4, knight c4, queen c7, g5, knight e8. Now, if this is best, I'd much rather do this than this. 100%. Anyway, um. Knight e5, rook d8, g4, bishop d7, double q mark as per anticipated, g5, the sack went in, and I was about to execute knight d7, which is the best move. Yeah, and uh, white wins. So this is it for today, guys. That was uh, inside my head. I was, as I said, trying to play as much down as I could to sort of cater for... Um, well, the audience that probably appreciates if I play against um, 1,900, 2,000 rated players. Many of my viewers are around that level. I sort of um, did or didn't, I don't know, play that. I mean, one of them was... Actually, both of them were in the 2,100 range. So, this is what it is. Um, thank you for tuning in for now. This is going to be it. Um, currently, we are still in a total struggle down with uh, the thumbnails... Um, so apologies for the time being, it's going to be a bit of a, um, uh, um, well, not as much of a top quality job as it used to be in the past few months, but, um, we are working on it. So please bear with me. Don't forget to sub. Don't forget to check out my previous videos. If you are new to the channel, there is a, 
a gold mine of content here without wanting to sound too self-confident. So thank you for tuning in. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.